This video is sponsored by CodingSkill.net. Let's work through majority element problem. A list has a majority element if more than half of its entries are identical. Our goal is to determine if a list has a majority element and if so, find it. We will make an assumption. We can use only equals equals equality operator. What does the output consist of? Output is a tuple that consists of three elements. The first element is a boolean indicating whether the list contains a majority element or not. The second is the majority element if it exists in the given list. The third is the number of occurrences of the majority element. What is the size of the problem? The size of the problem is n the length of the list. So what are the base cases? Empty list is a base case. We will return a tuple consisting of false, nil and zero. One element list is also a base case. In this case, we will return true and whatever that one element is, we will make that as a second element of the tuple and the number of occurrences is one in this case. What are the recursive cases? We decompose the list in two halves and solve the subproblems. Let's look at the recursion diagram. The input consists of this list. The output is, in this case, is false, nil and zero because four occurs only four times and the size of the list is eight. If it was five, we would have returned true, five and five as a tuple. So in this case, in the reduction step, we split this list A into two sublists. Sublist B consisting of the first half and sublist C consisting of the second half. The first sublist results in this tuple and the second sublist is also has a tuple of false, nil and zero as the output. And in the combined step, by combining the results of the subproblems, we have to return false as a result to produce the final output. So let's look at a concrete example number two. So input is given as this list. For this, we have a false, nil and zero. In the reduction step, we have the first half of the list as B and we have the second half of the list as C. The output for the first half is true because four occurs more than half the size of that particular list. In this case, total size is four and more than half is three in this case. So it's a majority element. So we say true and four is the element and it occurs three times in the list. And for C, it's false. So how do we get the final output in the combined step? We need a reassemble function that needs to calculate whether the given element occurs more than half the size of a given list. So in this case, three plus, we have to figure out the number of occurrences of this element four in the other sublist, in this case C. How many times does four occur in the C sublist? It's only once. So if we add three plus one, we will get four as the number of occurrences in total. So the total size is eight, but the total number of occurrences is only four. So it is not greater than n over two. It has to be greater than four. So this reassemble function must return false in this case. So what does the recursive function look like? We will provide an input list A and element X that we will check if that element is a majority element. So what is the base case? The list is empty. In this case, we will return zero. And the recursive case will be output 
consisting of the method applied to the tail of A, we will discard the first element and we will take the second element all the way to the end of the list and x plus a unit only if a naught equals x. If that first element in the array is equal to the element that was passed in, we will count that as 1. The number of occurrences will keep accumulating. So what does the reassemble function look like? The reassemble function can be computed through a linear function called occurrences. So let's look at the occurrences method. So it takes two parameters, the list and the element for which we want to count the number of occurrences in the given list A. So if A is empty, we return zero. Otherwise, we need to check if the first element in the array is the same as the given element x. If so, that boolean value needs to be converted into integer. If it is false, it becomes zero. If it is true, we need to convert it into one. And we need to add this to the recursive call that will reduce the value of the list by skipping the first element because we have already processed it by checking if the count is either zero or one for the given element x. Let's look at the code for majority element. The majority element takes one parameter and this parameter is the list. We first find the length of the list. If it is zero, we return false, nil and zero as the tuple. We also have another second base case that checks if the length is one. If so, in this case, we return true and the element that's in the one element array and the number of occurrences is only one. Otherwise, we will have recursive cases. And let's look at the recursive cases now. First, we, we will take the first half of the list, which is B, and we will have the second half of the list, which is C, and we will decompose the input list into two halves, B and C. And then we will have a recursive call and we will pass in B as the list, which is the first half. This invokes itself on the first sublist. So if the first element is true, then the majority element exists. We want to calculate the number of occurrences of this element. The second element of the tuple, TF1, is the actual element. Now we will pass in this element and check how many times this TF1 is occurring in this sublist C. TF2 is the number of occurrences of the element in the first sublist B plus occurrences is the number of occurrences in the sublist C. So we add them both. It needs to exceed half the size of the list. If so, we return true and we also return the element which is the TF1, second element of the tuple and the number of occurrences is the TF2 plus occurrences. Similarly, we have to do the same thing for the second sublist. So the code is identical. The only thing is T of majority takes C as the input. And in the occurrences, we have to pass in C as a sublist. Everything else is the same. Otherwise, if you haven't returned by this time, this is the other case where we did not find the majority element. So we need to return this as the tuple. So what is the time complexity? We are making two recursive calls with one half of the input. As you saw, we had to call majority on B and we had to call majority on C. And we have to compute occurrences of two sublists of length n by two approximately. So occurrences are also getting called twice for both the sublists. And we have a accelerator function that runs in linear time. So the equation for time complexity looks like this. 
So the order of growth is O of n log n.